In this lecture, we're going to have a look at how interpolation can be used to deal with network lag and how it affects the movement of player characters in multiplayer games. Interpolation works like this. Imagine a car is moving along a road. But you can't see this car continuously. You only get a glimpse of the car every couple of seconds. Given the position information you have about the car, you can probably make a pretty good guess of where it will be next. You will have interpolated its position. And this is how messages between computers get sent. At discrete intervals, the client sends transform data to the server. The server sends this information to the other clients who update the known position of the car. Adding complexity, is the network lag or the time it takes to transmit data from the client to the server and then from the server to the other clients. By the time the server and the other clients receive this data about the car's position, the car has already moved on. Therefore, the information the server and the other clients have is always from the past. Of course, when you're playing a multiplayer game, the last thing you want is to see the other player characters jumping around or jittering on the screen. To fix this, network games use an interpolation method called dead reckoning, which is also used in navigation systems to predict the position of moving objects. Each discrete value received from a client is analysed to determine the velocity and acceleration of the object. Pairing this with the time between the messages, we can use a linear interpolation calculation to predict where the object is. Linear interpolation borrows from physics the linear movement equation, which looks like this. PT is the position of the object at time t, or the object's position we're trying to calculate. PO is the last known position of the object. VO is the last known velocity of the object, where velocity includes a direction and also a speed value. AO represents the object's last known change in velocity, or what we know as acceleration. Last, to calculate the current position of an object, we must know how much time has elapsed between the original values for position, velocity and acceleration that we have. Let's look at an example. Imagine that we've received a message that tells us that a car's position is 10 metres along a straight track and its velocity is 5 metres per second and its acceleration is 2 metres per second squared. After 10 seconds we want to interpolate where that car is assuming it's travelling in a straight line. After plugging the values into the equation, we now know that the car, again assuming that it was travelling in a straight line, will now be 160 metres along the track. For all intents and purposes, linear interpolation is accurate enough when many messages are sent per second. The velocity that contains the speed and the direction of the object can be used to adjust the object's heading. Of course, interpolation isn't perfect, and when a new message is received about the position of an object, the algorithm must blend the position that it thinks the object is in with the new incoming position data. This is achieved using other complex formula and curves. Interpolation in Unity is handled by the Network Transform component. It allows you to control the rate at which transform data messages are sent, how far an object can move before it triggers an update position message, the maximum distance that blending will be applied to correct the distance position between the networked car and the car on the current machine. If the distance gets too far apart, then the object will simply be snapped to its new location. The amount of interpolation to be performed can also be specified. Rotations in a networked object can also be interpolated, where you can choose to compress the rotational corrections with respect to the message send rate, or you can turn off the angular sync velocity altogether. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at how these values work in practice.